All right, everybody, we're back on schedule. Welcome back. Uh, introducing our next speaker, this is uh, Nuno de Caramo. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the best. My American or accent will allow me to say your name. Uh, I hope you did it right. And I will turn it over to you, sir. Uh, this is for Cubert and her. Yes, thank you. You can hear me well, and I think you can see my screen too. Yeah, you can hear me, right? Yes, loud and clear. Oh, okay, 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 sorry. All right, so hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, I'm Nuno Do Carmo. I work for Suze Rancher. And I'll be talking about a specific topic that is close to my heart, which is Windows. <laughs> but how to run, actually, um, Windows VM on Harvester. So let me just get back here. So here I am. Um, like I said, I, I work for Suze Rancher since a few months now and uh, as a tech writer, actually. So uh, before all this demo will be very user centric. I don't know really all the details. However, I know my details when I will run uh, my workload. Um, I'm also a CNCF ambassador, Microsoft MVP, and Docker captain around WSL mainly. So Kubert is quite new for me. I discovered it thanks to uh, actually being the tech writer for Harvester now, and I really liked it. So I wanted to try out a lot of the, lot sorry lot of stuff, and well. Here I am. Um, you can find me normally on the Rancher user Slack, uh, the Kubernetes Slack uh, on Kubert. I'm on the channel. Uh, my Twitter is normally where I have the most, uh, let's say, community uh, communication. Uh, it's at, at Unix Tech. And I have a blog. It's WSL.dev. Um, again, around WSL all the time. But we are here for. Kubevert. It's the Kubevert Summit. So here is a story. So that's how I will present it. Like I said, I'm a user at the end of the day. So all the technical uh, talks that were before me and after me might be really into details. Here, it's more like how someone like me can already use Kubevert to run virtualized uh, environments on top of Kubernetes. Um, so I started to write for um, Arvester, like I said. So it's not a sales pitch at all, right? I'm, again, like I'm a tech writer. So I started to write uh, for Arvester, and I find out that it was really, really easy to just spin off like a VM. We will do that just after. Uh, this is also very demo-centric. And the thing is, like, while it was easy, at let's say launching the, the, the VM itself, then I went through some, let's say settings that guided me through the rabbit hole and I fell into one. Um, so the goal was simple. It was to run Windows VM on Kubert, okay? Uh, thanks to Arvester in this case. Uh, First, like uh, it's the second point. So writing while writing the docs, I was learning about it. And I learned a lot about like what Kubert was doing behind the scenes, how it was like uh, communicating with the uh, with Kubernetes, uh, with the objects of Kubernetes, and how potentially we could even enhance it thanks to the visualization capabilities that Kubert is actually leveraging also at the UI. At, sorry, at the OS level. So I'm a Windows guy, right? I know some Linux, uh, again, my WSL part, but I'm not into really like the kernel stuff and uh, uh, let's say the visualization on Linux as we speak. <laughs> so for me, it was like, wow, there's so much configuration on two layers, the Kubernetes layer and the OS layer. And what, let's say, bounded them was always Kubert. Uh, I have some Swiss chocolate biscuit for the demo, so hopefully everything will go well. And uh, yeah, we will have like a small wrap up at the end. 
So, uh, like every story, there's a preface. Uh, my assumption here is really that uh, you all have interest in Qbert, or at least use it way better than I do. Um, you might want to run or see how to run some Windows capability, uh, let's say VMs on Qbert, uh, optimized or not for now, or you just really care, don't care and you are a friend of mine, so I love you too. <laughs> um what will be covered during the demo that's important uh i will show like a running windows uh, vm uh on top of kubert with already the settings applied i might go through some uh additional settings live so that will be the live part let's say um where i might add maybe a disk i don't know we will see it, uh how it goes uh then uh, on, again, it will be again slides, but it will be more like what was the rabbit hole for me was really the Kubert top level API objects, and that's where I totally lost myself in a good <laughs> in a good way. But it was like, wow, we can do all that already, and it's not even V1 yet. So I'm, yeah, mind blown. Uh, and of course, Harvester HCI uh, will be part of the the demo on its own. If you are interested, I have the links on the end. But uh, again, uh, my colleague Sheng Yang uh, made uh, the Qbert session last year, okay, during the first one on Harvester itself. And that's where you will get really more details, like technical details. Uh, again, I'm the writer guy, I'm not the dev guy. So, what will not be covered, however, it's uh, I will not show an installation of Qbert, I will not show an installation of Harvester. I put links here um and i won't speak about the feature gates of kubert neither i will really use as it came like uh, as a user i installed it and what can i use right then the demo will be like that we will see actually the vm created already i can go through very shortly the steps if really needed but uh, I, I won't really create one. It might take too much time. Um, we will actually, however, kind of deep dive into the Kubert top level for one aspect, just showing you like the trail that I had to go through again as uh, someone that was interested, but it was quite interesting. Uh, then again, we will be back to the VM itself and, sh and see what actually the trail led me to perform and to do. And finally, uh, Kubernetes running on Kubernetes. OK, it's more like just saying like we are leveraging already some kind of powerful technology that is below. And we have like HA clusters. We have the, the live migration that was just explained just before. And that's that's just like kind of out of the box for us. We don't have to think about it anymore. So there's an abstraction layer that I really liked about it. So that's actually for now the first phase of <laughs> the um, how do you say the first phase of the theory. So directly, let's jump into a demo. So I know I'm sharing not the good screen. So let me put everything here, and let me also put. We love Windows, right? So here is my VM. Let me just put it bigger so you can see better. All right. So this is the VM. As you can see, I took the um, the Windows Server 2022 uh, ISO that you can find for free. Like it's the insiders one, but you can find it for free for test purposes. Uh, and here, uh, as you can see, I mean, that's Windows, right? Like with the Windows 11 look, but that's a Windows VM. And here we can already see like there's uh, this uh, name, okay, cool. And then we have like the IP from uh, from the Kubert uh, Masquerade actually uh, network. And and then what is nice here, what I wanted to show more is like thanks to all, let's say, the capabilities of Kubert we actually have virtualization enabled, for example, on this VM. As you can see, it's like four cores. Okay, one socket, four cores. Uh, it takes 
a model of my own, uh, let's say, running uh, Harvester uh, OS. So it's uh, it's just a laptop, by the way, but you can install it on uh, on other bare metal uh, uh, servers. Um, but then we have also something that is a little bit more interesting, which is like the BIOS is UFI, and we have the secure boot activated. And that one to reach that part again, we will see just after was quite interesting, really. So overall, if I now get back here, so this is Harvester. Like I said, is already installed. I won't uh, speak much about it. Uh, but here you can see like I have three VMs. One is running, which is my Windows server uh, for CPUs, 8 gig of RAM. And here is the actually the pod network. So you, if you remember, it was 10.0.2.2, like it was, again, another network on, on top of it. So here, if I just go to the config, as a user again, everything here will translate to kubevert, OK? So it will like run and create the VM for me. So it sets uh, CPU and memory. It gives it a name. Uh, choose the namespace. So this is really like Kubernetes now. Um, then we can have some volumes also added to it. We will see it maybe a bit uh, later uh, if the time permits. But uh, we have the, the CD-ROM, we have the disk. And everything actually here is abstracted. So it translates to Kubert capabilities, right, about the disks. And uh, we have even container disks that are possible, which I didn't even know about it, but that's quite cool. Then we have the networking. And again, I'm not selling Arvisor. I'm just saying like, this is like the, the uh, a UI for Kubert uh, below, right? And uh, here, so uh, like I said, we have Masquerade and so on. So the point here that is important for me to show now is that I have also like a YAML and let's pass everything here. And the points that were important is like, thanks to this configuration also sharing on YAML, I could actually add the features. Uh, as you can see, there's no Hyper-V features because I know they exist, but I didn't get into it uh, yet. But I could add the virtualization, so the nested virtualization into it. And a little bit uh, further down, I could add the secure boot. OK? So for now, that is the first part, uh, let's say, of the demo. At the end, I'm running my VM here, right? So I really have a VM running Windows Server 2022 on top of Kubert. That's cool, but <laughs> that wasn't easy. So. Actually, no, let me let me get back here. So okay, too many screens. And let me jump into then the second part. So once I installed it, like Harvester, I created my first VM. OK, nice. But now I wanted, let's say, the virtualization. So. Let me go back to Kubert. And then on Kubert, I had to follow some trail and I arrived to these uh, top level API objects, right? So the, tip, uh, the, the first one that I needed was like CPU to see like, okay, what is doing? I had the model, uh, which is a bit, yeah, here. So I could see that there's a lot of models, models of, um, of CPUs that I can use if I'm on Intel and also on ARM or AMD. So again, really, really great. Then I have this feature here because I wanted, I, I saw like uh, read that and by the way, thank you for, for the docs, right? Because sometimes I was going back and forth on, uh, on OpenShift and Red Hat documentation. And they were showing like, okay, there's uh, this VMX, which is the, the virtualization uh, headers. So there's the, the VMX that is, uh, that could be enabled, okay? So it's part of features. So I went to features here. 
So I try to follow, let's say again, it's a, it's a rabbit hole, right? Because now I'm going back into something else. And then I arrive in CPU feature here and it says like, okay, we have a policy. So if I come back now to this one, I have the CPU, I have the features, and now I have policies, which is either disable or require, but I have also a name. So the, that one was a bit more, let's say, a bit more complex to get, uh, and especially uh, when we are going down, really down, um, thanks to this blog post, I could understand a little bit better. And here would be like the name of the features from a kernel perspective. Because again, remember, we have two layers. We have really like the Kubernetes layer, but we have also the OS layer because it's virtualization. It relies on KVM. And now that was like when the Windows guy was really like trying to get all the information necessary to finally get everything, um, let's say, created and creating a VM that would make sense, that we could use, right? So here again is also the key emu um, uh, CPUs lists, uh, like the naming. And once I got to the CPU feature, right, I wanted then to have uh, UFI and Secure Boot, for example. By default, when I use Harvester, it comes with uh, BIOS, not UFI, and there's no Secure Boot at all there. So I was like, okay, what could I do? And here, that's where I found out uh, where it was. Okay, let me jump here back. And that's where I found out like the firmware, we could use like the bootloader, cool. And then on the features, there's this SMM, I don't even remember what it is, but uh, it's necessary for the UFI to be enabled. And actually, thanks to the docs again, so I didn't uh, put this one here, but uh, if I go to features, I can see that I have the SMM here and, oh, okay, nice. I'm on, uh, okay, I'm doing some live uh, <laughs> annotation. And then we have also firmware that should be here. Okay, and here I have bootloader. And if I follow bootloader, I can set the UFI. And if I get to UFI, finally, I can tell like secure boot is on or off. And here, Thanks to this documentation, I could find out that it requires SMM. So now I knew where to find SMM. It was on the feature, so I could enable it. So finally, I would have everything here like created, and my VM could finally uh, be running like a UFI boot and also the secure boot. That's what we see here finally, which is we have the virtualization. Like I said, and on the system information, maybe it's a bit too small. I don't know how, or oh, maybe I can do something like that. So here I have the secure boot state on and I have the BIOS mode on UFI. So no, I want to, all right. So let me go back now to the presentation. So that was the first half of the demo, but I, I just want to be sure that uh, I have time to just explain. So here I put like everything that went down. Uh, there's another nice, I just uh, put it on um, on bolt, but that's a very nice feature, which is the run strategy instead of running, which is true or false. Uh, actually the run strategy, because we are running on top of uh, Kubernetes, right? So right now, whenever I shut down from the OS, as we speak, right, uh, the VM will actually restart because it's a pod at the end of the day. And then the deployment, the demon set just said like, okay, this pod is not no more working, okay? So I have to restart it. And then your VM restarts. And that's not really what we want. Thanks to Kubert, actually, now we have like the run strategy and we can shut it down and we have this rerun on failure only. So if it fails, sends a flag, I guess, and then it's like, okay, the pod now is restarted. However, if I shut it down properly, then the VM will just stop, which is 
just really, really cool. It, it doesn't mean, let's say, I know it's not much maybe when I explain it like that, but for a user just thinking that all these steps have been already implemented and created and achieved by Kubever, like it's really, for me, it's really amazing. I don't know how to explain it, but for me, it's really, really amazing. So, um, so yeah, so here is the, again, the, the rabbit, uh, the rabbit trail, the rabbit hole. So I, we had the CPU features, we had the firmware and we have the SMM uh, feature also. All right, another one that I really, really liked. And again, from a, uh, from a user perspective, this is quite cool. So Harvester, I didn't show you. Let me see if I do, no, I'll tab. Yeah, it doesn't like it, it does. Uh, oh no, okay, sorry, not alt tab, I'm my bad. I know it's recording, there's nothing <laughs> critical there. Um, let me show you virtual machines. All right, so here I can open a console with WebVNC, okay? It will start the console and we can see it. But again, I'm, I'm a Microsoft guy, so I like to have remote desktop. Now we are using the HCP for the network for the, the, the when the pods like are created so the VM is created it, it's it's assigned uh, an IP which is maybe not static static sorry so for me it was like okay I don't want to go each and every time to my console sorry it's here to my console here and change the IP so Harvester, uh, sorry, Harvester, not Harvester, Cuber <laughs> did something really nice with the service objects. And it simply can create like a, a node port, okay? From the port that is on, let's say, the node port, so external port, which is like by default, it was shown as uh, 30,000. Then a port of uh, Kubernetes, uh, the service. And then finally a target port to the pod, to the VM, which is the 3389. So for me, it was perfect. It's like, oh, okay. So now, as you can see here, if I switch back to this one, I have not my pod IP every time, but I have my node IP with a port, with a different port, and I can connect to the different VMs once they are running and it will actually go to the different VMs if they are running or not, okay? In this case here, I don't care about this IP no more. I don't care if the next time I, re I restart this VM, it will be maybe 250. I don't care about it. I care about my pod and my port and that's all. And really that is one really, really cool feature. So, actually, how much time do I have more? I'm just showing the, the kind of the last uh, bit. 11 minutes. 11 minutes. Okay. Can I try something nice then, potentially? Sure. All right. So, let me again swap back here. So, what I will do is... Uh, I will not create a new VM in this case. Uh, but what I will do is, like, I will try... Uh, very quickly to create a new volume. So it's using Longhorn behind the scenes, but again, I, I will refer to the um, uh, to the to the demo uh, from uh, Shengyang last year. It was really nice. Kubert submits disk, and I want uh, yeah, just a ten gig. All right, and it's new, and I will create. So what Harvester is doing is like creating a, um, a PV behind the scenes, okay? And now I can, uh, da, 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 da. no, this one is created. So I will go to the virtual machine. So the virtual machine is running. So let me quickly go to 
add a new volume or add existing volume. Yeah, add existing volume. So this one I can kill and we'll call it Qbert submit disk. It's a disk on Virtio. Oh, yeah, by the way. And I will save the configuration. Okay, that should not, okay, that's the demo. The, it was not a good chocolate then. Let me cancel and just re retry it. Okay, and, oh, okay. It killed the VM itself. <laughs> All right, so, well, I might try again. Uh, that was not good chocolate, apparently. The gods don't like Swiss chocolate, but yeah questions if any <laughs> hey live demos are fantastic though the, but really <laughs> impressive impressive demo we do have a couple questions from chat uh one question was uh from andre uh does harvester support redfish boot instead of pixie i don't know again i will i will send out to i, I put like the resources but everything that is about really harvester Let's say uh, I know IPXC. It's uh, it's used Redfish. I am not sure. Cannot tell. And then Jennifer asked, "I am curious. Are you doing anything to enable L2, L3 CPU cache for the Windows VM, as seen in Task Manager? Windows 10 seems to ignore the Q QMU L3 emulate flag by default. Maybe 2022 is different." All right. No, I didn't do anything. I just really created and added these settings. And if there's a L2, L3 cache, uh, I'm not, I didn't do anything. If it's enabled, then uh, Windows Server uh, 2022 is the one that enabled it for me. But uh, I didn't touch anything. The only thing that I did at some point was to choose uh, a model of CPU in the, in the configuration, really, like I showed, like in the, in the key new CPUs. But uh, other than that, no, I didn't do anything. Okay. And Alexander uh, indicated that during your demo, you didn't unclick the restart VM, and that might have been the source of the error. Of the oh, wow. Laptop. Yes. Smarter than me. Okay. It's already rebooted. But uh, let me see if the volume is um, – the volume is not bound. So – Sorry, I will try again. Okay. So, all right. Add existing volume. I will just keep disk one for now. Yeah, let's 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 do it correctly. Qbert submit disk. Okay, and save. No, it doesn't want. So I have to I have to check again why it's missing but uh yeah so the goal here is to actually uh use the odd plug volume capability feature gate and uh you can just add a new disk to your running vm you don't have to uh to cancel it but yeah right now demo gods are not happy <laughs> okay thank you Thank you, Nuno. I don't see any other questions, but last call if you have. Thanks, Nuno. And next up, we'll have David Vossel in six minutes. <laughs> 